Hello everyone and welcome back to the X-Ring. I hope you're doing well this morning. If you would, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me. It'll definitely help out the channel and help the channel to grow. So what we're going to do today is a video I've been trying to do for a while, and that is taking a look at different spotting scopes. If you're into long range shooting or ELR 22 or anything like that, you are going to want to have a spotting scope with some type of mill reticle. Can you do it without a reticle? Yes, you can. However, I think it will cost you some points because that reticle will do so much on corrections, on being able to see what other shooters are doing. You guys know that I run the the SIG, the binos, the laser range finding binos, and while they're great, they're a 10 power. Even if you go up to a 15 power, oftentimes it's not enough to see the exact point of impact from other competitors, and all of that information that you gather will help you gain points, especially when it comes to wind calls. So what we're doing is we're standing here at this overlook. I've got, there's a house down there about 3,000 plus yards away. And we're gonna take a look at a couple of different offerings. Everything from a Bushnell Legend Tactical at the $600 price point, all the way on up to a Vortex Razor 85 millimeter HD that's gonna be running somewhere about $2,500 by the time you get the eyepiece and stuff. We're also going to check out the Leupold Mark IV as well as the Burr Signature HD. So stick around. All right, so before we get started, first and foremost, you have to ask yourself, do you want a straight through scope, something that you're going to look straight through, something that's either a compact prism or a straight through a longer one, or do you want something with an angled eyepiece like this Vortex? They all have their pros and cons and their advantages and disadvantages to both, so we're going to answer those questions first before we start looking into them. So first up is going to be the Legend Tactical. Uh, this spotting scope right here has been around with me for a long time. I've actually had about four of these. Uh, the very first time I was introduced to this spotting scope, I was actually shooting a DMR match and had some group guys on the squad with me and they had a bunch of these. And I was like, I'm surprised you guys would be using those Bushnells. And they were like, man, these are like disposable units. They're perfect. They're sub $600. They're completely ruggedized. They said it's actually a good little unit for what it is. And I would agree with them. While it's not going to be these other units that we're gonna be looking at with regards to clarity of the glass, it will do everything you need it to do and it does have a mill reticle in here. The power range on this is gonna be 15 to 45, which I think is about perfect for a spotting scope. And one of the reasons is, is you definitely want to have a low enough power magnification so you still have a great field of view. While some of these other bigger spotting scopes start at about 27 power or so, you've really cut down on your field of view, especially when you're looking at targets. Now you can't see entire arrays unless you can dial down low enough. What I like about this Bushnell is it's completely up armored. This is all rubberized and you have three pick rails. You have one on the top, left and right side. Mount on the bottom and then you have your power ring here. And then coming up, you have your focus, your regular focus. And then coming up again, you actually have your reticle focus, which is a huge thing for me. And so for those that wear corrective lenses, or in my case, I actually have 2010 in this eye and 2015 in this eye. So if I use someone else's spotting scope, or if I use someone else's rifle scope, I do have to adjust it because of my vision being different. The the reticle focus is important. We'll touch on that in a little bit. You also have the standoff piece for the eye cup in case you do wear glasses or something where it does have the cushion. This is all rubberized and guys, this has been, uh, for lack of a better word, this one's been like hell and back. This actually took a dump off of the razor here on a tripod at the last long range class that I taught. And um, it was about 35 miles an hour and this thing went bouncing down the road. Still works perfectly and had no damage to it. But of course you can expect it's going to have a little less clarity at distance, which you'll see here in just a minute. All right, so next up is going to be an angled eyepiece model. This is the Burris Signature, the HD. This is a 20 to 60 power. And one of the things you need to realize about these spotters like this is while it's probably going to come with a 20 to 60 eyepiece, it's not gonna have a reticle in it. You're gonna have to purchase that separately. Now, the good thing about it is this is very similar to a camera mount. Detach it like this once you hit the release and you have a rubber O-ring. Once you take this off, what you're gonna be able to do is you'll be able to take the eyepiece, which is gonna cost about another $300, whether you get the SCR, the mill, or the MOA, and you'll be able to put it on 
snap it on and then now you'll have like a fixed power reticle okay so that is actually going to be a fixed power so that way all the ranging and everything you do with it is going to be correct okay so so if you want to talk about scopes and first focal plane and second focal plane that is important to know because on the compact prism like this when you actually look through here and you dial your power your reticle size changes so this is going to be a first focal plane reticle anything that you mill on any power is going to be correct now whether you're talking about the burris or even any of the vortexes you can't do that it's not going to change the reticle size so what it's going to be is it's going to be in the second focal plane with a fixed reticle so as far as the Burris, the Burris you can get, street price is going to be somewhere around $1,400 or so. I've seen it for about $1,300, and that's with the 20 power eyepiece. What's nice about this, it does have knockouts here on the side so that you can actually mount a Burris fast fire because if you've never used an angle spotting scope, an angled eyepiece sometimes is a little harder to get on target. So that gives you a quick way to be able to acquire it quickly using the red dot, and then you're pretty much on it. The other thing is, is you actually have here, you have a rough focus and a fine focus, which makes that really nice. You also coming forwards, you have the 85 millimeter objective. You have a sunshade that's built in. Most of these will have a sunshade built in. And then you have the ring here itself, which this will allow you to, once you loosen the screw, this will allow you to rotate it. And they usually put detents in here for 45 degrees, um, 90 degrees, and then you can even run it almost all the way down to the bottom. So this is a rubberized unit as well in the areas of tan. Everything else is going to be that aluminum, and it's a good quality build for a good price point. All right, next up, the one that needs no introduction is going to be the Leupold, the Mark IV. This model right here is actually the 12 to 40 with a 60 millimeter objective. This has went with me everywhere for the last five or six years. Um, this has been a great, great unit. Um, like I said, tons of military units use this all over the world. This has, been, this has been used very, very well. So you have a rubberized texture throughout the entire scope. Even the power magnification ring is rubberized here. And then you have a focus here. There is no reticle focus on this, and there have been times where I have gotten a magnification where the reticle is not quite clear. You can get everything from a TMR style reticle to the H59s, and this is going to start at about $2,000. This has just a rubber standoff for the eyepiece here, and it's quite a bit of rubber, which this one's actually torn right here from use. Um, no big deal, but there is no sunshade or anything like that. Now, most of these are going to come with some type of case or ruggedized case that's going to help with transport. And this has been a solid unit for me, but once again, it's going to be about $2,000. It does have a reticle that's in the first focal plane, so it will change size in relationship to the power ring. But this is a great unit, but the price point is quite costly. Let's move on to the next one, which is going to be the Vortex. Now, next up is going to be the most expensive of the unit we're going to be looking at today. Unfortunately, I don't have one of the Vipers. Uh, the Viper, they make one that is actually a little bit cheaper. You can get it for about $900 or so, and you can get the MOA or the Milradian eyepiece. But I don't have one of those available, so maybe you guys can comment on how those do or if you've ever compared one to these. This is going to be up on the higher end. So you're looking at about $1,900 just for the spotting scope itself. It will come with the 20 to 60 eyepiece. It doesn't come with the mill radian eyepiece, which is going to run you another $400 to $500. One of the things that bugs me about this is, I don't know if you guys can hear this, but whenever you get your reticle focus, this rattles, rattles quite a bit. So while we're talking about pros and cons, we need to talk about angled eyepieces. So an angled eyepiece on a spotting scope like this, guys, you can imagine when it's raining, anytime it rains or it snows or anything, all of that is going to collect and settle here on your eyepiece. Uh, any dew that's falling, you're going to always see that on this eyepiece. So it's very important to either cover them up, rotate them downwards or something like that. That's one of the disadvantages of an angled eyepiece. However, there are some advantages. Some advantages are you're typically not going to, so let's pretend I had this and it's a straight through. I have to have my tripod at this height. 
Well, as we lower this, I'm looking down, now we don't have to have our tripod as high. And what that will do is it will stabilize it better, especially in high winds where your tripod's actually gonna be lower to the ground because typically you're gonna be looking down into it than having your tripod all the way up here and being more susceptible to shaking and vibration through winds. So that's an advantage of an angled eyepiece. Another advantage of an angled eyepiece is looking uphill. If you have your tripod mounted and you're looking up the side of a mountain, it's pretty easy to do it when it's uphill, but the opposite of this is true. Now, when you're trying to look on a steep grade or a decline, now it's really hard to get up over it because of that angled eyepiece. Now you can rotate it and I'm aware of that. Um, I've been using spotting scopes, the old cow was from way back in the day from doing NRA high power and we would use um, angled eyepieces and rotate them like this while we were standing shooting iron sights and so that way all you had to do was not move your body position and you could still shoot your, your shots and look like that. So, so there are some advantages to it. Yes, you can do that with a straight through but now your tripod and all that and your stand is in your way of you shooting. So there are advantages and disadvantages. Conversely, when you're looking at a straight through, or in this case, like a compact prism, um, typically they're gonna be a lot smaller, they're gonna be more lightweight, and if I'm gonna do any type of team ruck match or anything, usually myself or my partner is carrying this optic right here, this spotting scope, because it will do everything we need for second shot corrections, and it's super lightweight, it's easy to pack in a pack, so, this one's a hard one to beat, even though the other ones are gonna typically give you better light, and they're also gonna give you better image quality when you get into those higher end, bigger 85 millimeter objectives. And kind of departing from the norm, we're also going to compare the AccuFire. This is the Omnis. Uh, this is gonna run you about $1,500. This is a digital spotting scope, which has an unbelievable power range from 30 x as the start point all the way up to 120 x and we're going to compare this looking down range and we've got some the, the light's kind of rough because it's kind of coming in at us at about 11 o'clock position so we can look at image quality and everything else remember something like this is going to use batteries you're going to have to have batteries out in the field or you're going to need to have some type of power pack uh, to be able to power this for a long amount of time because on a typical set of 123 batteries you're only going to get about two to three hours on this from what i've seen but we're going to take a look at it we're going to look at all of these and i'll do the best that i can to digiscope these to give you a fair representation of what it looks like at distance so here we go all right so to do this properly it's really really tough to do i'm going to leave this on one power as best i can or as close to it and you guys can see this house down here, um, this farm that's about 3,100 yards away. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have you take a look at the reticle first. The reticle does have half mil graduations. And then at three, six, and nine, um, as I zoom in, you should be able to see, um, this is where it's gonna get really, really tough, especially with the uh, magnification. Uh, it's going to be tough to get everything centered up into this phone, but I'll do the best that I can with it. And we are going to zoom all the way into that 40 power. You see how we're starting to get a ton of Mirage right now? Uh, and that is normal. Let me go ahead and try to find focus this. There we go. And you guys can see that reticle at 3, 6, and 9 where it's got the two tenths. So it's not bad at all, especially for a $600 spotting scope. And I'm gonna go ahead and zoom on out so you guys can see that field of view there, and then all the way down to that 15 power. So that's the Bushnell Legend Tactical. All right, so next up is the Leupold. And looking at it initially, it does have a little bit of a bluish tint to it, but it doesn't make it any less difficult to focus in. Okay, so you guys can see that. Let me go ahead and move this back around. And let's go ahead and start zooming in. Let me go ahead and find focus on that house again. There we go. And so, regardless of it being canted just slightly, what you're gonna see on that reticle is you're gonna see you have very clear half mil, full mil, and then you also have two tenths at three, six, nine, and 12. And we're gonna take this all the way up to 40 power. 
which that's it right there guys i'm trying to hold it as steady as i can but it gives you an idea and this is with no uh, digital zoom on the cell phone all right next up will be the burris signature we've got the 2260 and then we also have the scr eyepiece all right so here's the burris signature we are on 20 power right now let's go ahead and zoom this on up to 60 power i'll try to keep everything all synced and automatically you're, you're going to already see a huge difference in light gathering we're getting to the point now where it's actually going to be really really tough to i mean because you've got to be so close in on these but this is going to be all the way out to 60 power which you guys are not going to be that concerned with I'm trying to hold just enough tension and then let me try to see if I can get a better focus here. It's about as good as we're going to get. You can see that truck moving off to the left. Remember guys, this is 3,000 yards away. 3,100 actually. So let's go ahead and put the reticle on there and see what that looks like. All right, so I've put the Burris, the SCR mill reticle on here, and I'm trying to do this as best I can and do this in a way that is not changing the light for any of the four units or the five units. But what I like about the SCR mill reticle is the same thing you're going to see in your Burris optic. So that SCR, you're going to see two tenths hold along your horizontal line, and then you actually have tenth holds. So if you're trying to do fine, fine um, milling, between five and seven, you'll see at nine o'clock and at three o'clock, you're going to see those one-tenth holes. So that's it, and it is a fixed 25 power, I believe, fixed 20 power. Um, but you can see how clear it is, and that's pretty much what you're gonna use most of the time, being able to range and call your hits. Uh, we'll go ahead and put the sunshade out and see if that makes a difference. Really doesn't make any difference at this angle here, um, but you guys can see exactly what I'm seeing here on that house. All right, next up is the Vortex, and I'm gonna try to get this image in here as best I can. It does have a very good, clean image. I am gonna give it that. You're also gonna notice the, the purple hue, or the blue hue. Uh, this is the 20 to 60, I think it is. I'm gonna try to turn this power ring without affecting the image by bouncing it around too much. We're gonna surely start losing our eye box. There we go. And you guys can see how clear that is. I am definitely impressed with the Vortex, but it's also the ex most expensive out of the group, okay? Um, as far as one of the things that I really dislike about the Vortex, guys, is the fact that there is no lockering for this eyepiece. So as you see that, I'm just trying to move the power down and my eyepiece just came out. There's no lockering for this. So I wish they would have incorporated a lock collar for this. It's not that big of a deal. You can just hold it if you want, but it's something you need to be aware of. It does have a standoff as well. Let's go ahead and put the reticle piece eyepiece in there. All right, so with the eyepiece in there, you can actually see everything very clearly. You can notice that on the reticle, uh, you have very fine adjustments there. Um, I can't really, I'm gonna zoom in on this only once so you guys can see that reticle. You can see the, um, the mill holds there and it's done every two tenths. So it has that and it has a really long eye relief. So it's actually really, really good because you don't have to get in so close to it. Um, but I wanted you guys to see the image quality in all of these. I was able to do this in the course of about 15 minutes, so the light didn't really change between the units. Uh, looking through the reticle, um, what I do like about it is it's very clean and there's no vertical on this eyepiece. So it does clear up that image and you've got the stadia line below the horizontal line and you've got left and right and it goes all the way out to 20 mils left, right and then down you've got 18 mils. So it gives you great viewing and your eye relief is pretty generous uh, with a good field of view. So it's definitely uh, definitely pretty good here, but I do like that reticle layout. All right, so the last one we're gonna take a look at is the one by the AccuFire. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is it's got one touch, it's got single touch control here. You can just press on it and I can adjust the brightness. Uh, I mean, everything on this. So let me go ahead and turn this brightness up. And to be fair, we are starting to get some haze out here now. 
but I am going to use the <clears throat> the camera here to show you what we're looking at and for surveillance <laughs> I don't think you could beat this thing all right and you have a bunch of different images you can choose from I'm having to do this one a little differently but guys that is the lowest power zoom this is 30 so as we zoom in I mean you guys are going to see this thing is crazy with the image stabilization and which you can see we're only at 64 power right now 70 power that's 120 power right there and of course I did forget to bring the sunshade for it so we're getting a reflection off of the back but yeah you could actually see everything that's going on down there and you can choose different reticles as well I think that's a better representation of what you're going to see. I was trying to get all the light out of here because of the sunshade. But you guys can see that. Look at that. That's incredible. Almost to the point where it's unusable there. All right, so it is so tough to be able to give you these evaluations. Number one, getting all these products and showing you a good representation of what they actually look like. But one thing I am certain of is all of these have a ton of experience, okay? So this one I actually bought in 2017, the Leupold. I've had zero issues with it. It is expensive, it's $2,000, but you're all in. You don't buy any extra eyepieces or anything else. You can choose the TMR reticle or even the H59 reticle for a little uh, upcharge there. They do a grid system and we already know it's battle proven and it works. This is what you'll find on me 90% of the time because it's small, it's compact. If I'm doing any type of team match or ruck match, it works well and it has a great field of view, having that lower range of power because typically you're not going to be going up that high anyway because as you see, you get a lot of mirage. So this is probably going to be my pick for everything that I do, but your needs might vary. One of the other things is, is you can't get a laser rangefinder. So you guys know that I've had the SIG Kilos now for about the same amount of time 2018 or so 2019 whenever they first came out and this is usually tethered to the bottom of my tripod so i usually always have this to verify range and it's a good decent working power uh, also the leicas these have been to heck and back they've been on multiple matches the hdbs or the hd-b i don't use the ballistic range finders in these anymore i'm just using arm charts but a spotting scope is critical. Now that being said, the Compact Prism Bushnell for $600. I don't think you can beat it. Like I said, I've had about four of these. This one has been all over the place and it's my good loner spotter, if you will. Okay, so I don't mind someone using this. I actually gave a set to uh, Kenneth E and he says he loves it. Takes it with him everywhere. I can throw it in the back of the Ranger. I don't even care uh, because I know it'll put up with it and Bushnell's got the great guarantee. Now, since I'm evaluating all of them, I will tell you that a lot of uh, my viewers had bought these before in the past and some of them saw inclusions in the lenses where it looks like little dots that are internal. Um, and I get that. You got to remember it's a $600 optic. They were able to send it back and they got new ones or it was repaired. Uh, in some other instances, I know that one of them said his reticle was a little off center, um, but they repaired it. No problem. So you do have that Bushnell warranty and Bushnell's been around a long time. So I don't think you have any issues with that. But as far as durability, I mean, this does it for $600. The image quality isn't the greatest, even though they are using higher end glass, it is not going to compare to any of these and that price reflects that. Now, with regards to the Burris, the Burris signature is a little long in the tooth. It's been out for quite a while, but it's a good solid unit. I like the things that I do like about it is the price point. Um, like I said, you can get some of these for around $1,400 or so. I've been seeing it vary on Amazon. I do like the rough focus and fine focus wheel here. Uh, that does make it really, really nice, especially on a spotter with bigger power. I like the fact that you can put um, the Burris, the fast fires on here and get a quick and get a quick target acquisition. It does come with, I know I didn't put the neoprene cover on this. I do have a hard case for this one. Uh, this one actually looks really rough because it is a demo unit that's been used quite a bit. And the big shout out to the guys over at Burris, you know, I try to represent them as well as I can. I think they offer great products for a good value. 
um, and this is no exception. Um, you can definitely get the eyepieces when they're available. Um, you know, you got to choose between MOA or mill, but it's important to use the same thing that you're using in your scope. That way you can get a second shot correction, whether it's your partner shooting or whether you're seeing it. But guys, this will save you points. You can get points in a match just by using a spotting scope because of what you can see that the wind's doing or those tendencies. You'll also see the impacts and which way the dust goes, but all in all, this is not a bad value. Now, as far as clarity, I'm gonna have to give it to the Vortex, but rightly so, because it is the most expensive one in the group. It is a great, robust unit. Uh, this has taken a lot of abuse. Uh, I know that for a fact. It's been in use for a couple years now. Uh, I don't like the rattling on the eyepiece, but that's not a deal breaker. Um, but with these angle eyepieces, remember you do collect snow and dust. And even sometimes when you're spotting and you look up, this is a common one, you guys know if you've done it, is you'll be talking or you'll be breathing and you're breathing right onto that eyepiece and then it fogs over. So these are all things to think about and there are considerations. Um, but like I said, that Vortex is a good one. That Viper spotter, Razor, might be a really, really good one as well. Unfortunately, I don't have one of those in the tests. But all in, you're looking at $20, $200, $2,300 for the Vortex. Now also keep in mind they are very heavy. These are much heavier because they have much bigger lenses comparing those 85 millimeter lenses as opposed to these 60 millimeters. So I hope this is really, really good information for you guys. I know it was a long video, but you can't evaluate four different um, or five different optics for that. Now with regards to the Omnis, um, I think this is a great unit for surveillance, for law enforcement, but for PRS and rimfire, uh, there really isn't a place for it. Just because of the battery life, um, just because it's sometimes hard to see, but what you get out of a digital unit like this is incredible magnification. You can record all of your footage, whether it's photos or videos, um, but I believe for, for spotting and what we do, this is not really the right option. This is really great if you're a content creator and you need to show impacts out at range. I just really wish this had a lower scale, being 30 as the minimum. And that's one of the other things about these other big spotters is having that 30 or that 27, that's really huge. I mean, it'd be nice if they gave you that workable range because typically you're not going to be in the 50s and 60s. It's, it's almost too much mirage regardless of conditions. So I'm not real big on that huge power stuff. So I guys hope you enjoyed that review. Please hit that subscribe button. If you're not subscribed to the channel, it only takes a second. You just log into YouTube and remember to check us out on Rumble as well. I hope you guys have a great week and we'll talk to you soon. Have a good one.